Helen, hello, good evening. So late in England. Chris, hi, hi everyone. Good evening, how are you? Yay, how are you guys? Are you good? I am better, finally. My voice is good, so I can do lives. I'm so excited. Hi, guys. So today, we're going to be talking about job interviews. Now, that's a really important topic because when you are learning English and suddenly you have a job interview in English, it can be a little bit nerve-wracking. I think maybe nerve-wracking is a new word, isn't it? Nerve-wracking is when something makes you nervous. So, oh my gosh, job interviews are really nerve-wracking. They make you nervous, so they are nerve-wracking. Good evening. Job interviews are really nerve-wracking, but they don't have to be if you are prepared to talk in English. First of all, before we talk about the questions, I'm going to be talking to you guys about three questions that normally come up in job interviews. They are normally there, okay? They are very simple questions that people like to ask. So you need to be prepared, okay? But before we do that, I need to tell you something very important, which is a job interview in English, if you live in Brazil, there are two situations. There is the situation um, that, <laughs> that is about people that live in Brazil and have an interview in English, and hi, Twiggy, hi, uh, and people that uh, live abroad and have a job interview abroad. They are very different interviews normally, okay? So today we're going to be talking more about job interviews in Brazil. Um, first thing, right, listen more than you talk. It's always more important when you go to an interview in English because you are bound to get nervous. What does this mean? You are bound to get nervous. It means you are really, probably, most likely going to get nervous. So, it's an interview in English. You are bound to get nervous. If you start talking like a crazy person, you're probably gonna speak too much and you're probably gonna make mistakes that you don't wanna make because you are nervous. So that's my number one tip. Listen more, talk less. If you are not 100% comfortable with speaking English, okay? Tip number one. First question that they are always 100% of the time almost 100% of the time, going to ask you when you go to a job interview in English. Question number one. You probably know this, right? Tell me about yourself. Oh my God. Tell me about yourself. It's so hard in Portuguese as well because nobody likes to talk about themselves. We don't want to sit there and be like, I'm great, you know? <laughs> I'm amazing, basically, I'm the best. We don't want to do that. So it's very difficult to do it in English as well because you don't know what the right words are for this question. So what I have here is tip number one. When they ask you, tell me about yourself. First thing you have to say is, sure. Can you say this? Is a smile. Sure. First thing you do. When they ask you a question, and you're going to answer, first thing you say, sure, sure, sure. Why? Because it makes you feel, feel confident because you just said a positive word and it makes the person listening to you think that you are ready for this. You know, this is a positive answer because normally people say, like if, if they ask somebody, can you, t can you tell me about yourself? People normally say, yes or they say, okay, but if you say, sure, it's very natural. Tip number one, write it down, make notes. Tip number one, sure. I have a list here of some things you can say about yourself. If they are true, we're not lying here, come on. Um, I don't recommend that you lie on an interview. Really, I don't, because it's just gonna backfire, isn't it? You say I lied today, tomorrow they're gonna be like, 
you said you were a very sociable person and now you're not coming to the company's party. I'm not really sociable, you know? So don't lie. Uh, I'm an optimist. That's cool. That's something people never say. Sure, um, this is good. Um, when you're thinking in English, we make this sound. Um, I'm an optimist. How good is that? It's a very different thing to say and it gives the impression that you are this amazing person. Sure, I'm an optimist. I am focused. Focused. Can you hear the pronunciation here, guys? Focused. I am focused, I'm outgoing, I don't know if you know what this means. Outgoing is the opposite of um, introverted and shy. I am quite shy, as you guys know, because I always say this. But someone outgoing, they normally have lots of friends and they go out to big parties and they're like super crazy. So those are outgoing people, okay? Outgoing together, outgoing. So if you are, if you really, really are outgoing, then you can say, uh, I'm outgoing, I'm focused, hello, I'm outgoing. Now I have the best one on my list. This one is like, bang, so good. I'm driven. I am driven. Do you know what driven means? It means that, the, yes. Okay, but we need to change that sentence. I'm going to change it for you, André. Uh, I work hard to reach my goals. Everybody listen up. I work hard to reach my goals. That's better because it sounds more natural, okay? I work hard to reach my goals. Well done. Send me more sentences, guys, about yourselves so that I can correct it. Um, when you say you are driven, it, mean, it means that um, you like challenges. It means that you work hard to reach your goals. It means that you like to try hard, you want to be better. So it's a very positive thing to say about yourself. If you go to an interview, hi, if you go to an interview in English and you say, um, if they ask you, tell me about yourself, and you're like, okay, I am um, responsible. Don't say that. Because that's obvious. If you're looking for a job and you have a family to support and you're an adult, you're probably, hopefully, hopefully responsible. So don't say obvious things. Surprise them with something, you know, more advanced, something better. So instead, say, sure, uh, I'm an optimist. I am focused. I'm very driven. I love working. And I'm also very outgoing, you know, I like to be with friends and like to go out with people and socialize. See how different this is because you are showing, giving a positive attitude about yourself. All right, my lovely people, question number two. Question number two, okay, is... This was a question from one of you guys. Hello, one of you guys. I got this question as a suggestion and I thought that was a really good one. So here it is. What do you like to do in your spare time? Any ideas what spare time means? Spare time is your free time. Your time. <laughs> oh, thank you. <laughs> Uh, your time um, where you're not doing anything, your free time where you're just chilling, having fun. Uh, remember, this is a job interview, you know? So they're going to ask you, what do you like to do in your spare time? I don't recommend that you say, uh, drinking. I love drinking in my spare time. It's not a good idea. Although you may like drinking and that's fine, but you don't have to say it. Okay, so this is a problem when it's an English interview because we get nervous and sometimes the nerves get the best of you. Do you know what, <laughs> thank you. Do you know what that means? Your nerves get the best of you. It means that you get so nervous that you end up talking nonsense. 
saying crazy things like, yes, I love going to the pub every night, Monday to Friday. <laughs> no. no, 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 don't say that. Um, so you might say, be honest here. Think really about yourself before you go to this interview in English. Think about yourself. What is it that you really like to do in your spare time? You know, do you, do you prefer to go out or stay in? That's a very good place to start. If you prefer to go out, you can say, I love going out, uh, I love traveling. That's a good one, because when you love traveling, it means that you are a very open-minded person. Open-minded, that you are interested in different, hello, thank you, uh, that you are interested in different things, and that always gives a very nice um, impression. Okay, so I like to go out, I love traveling, um, I also like to um, go to nice fancy restaurants, do you understand this? Fancy restaurants are very nice, posh, you know, expensive most of the time, restaurants, so I enjoy uh, good food, you know, that's, that's nice. You know, if you like sports, really, then you talk about, hi, dad, then you talk about sports. If you like movies, then you say, I love to stay in watching Netflix. No problem about that. That's fine. So when you ask somebody who likes to stay at home, you say, I love to stay in. That's your sentence. Write it down. Special tip. I love to stay in watching uh, TV shows and movies. Um, so that's it. Question number two. What do you do in your spare time? Okay, guys, very important question. You're bound to get this question. Now for question number three, this was also one of your suggestions. And I think this is a brilliant question because it's 99% of the time it comes up. Yeah, stay in. That's a very good one. I like to stay in. I personally love to stay in. I'm always in. I just like to stay in. I love going out too, but I tend to get a bit lazy. I don't know. Are you guys a bit lazy? I'm a bit lazy sometimes to go out. I prefer to stay in. So, question number three. Lots of people joining now. Hello, everyone. You've missed the first two questions. No, but we've got one more to go, so stay here. Where do you see yourself in five years? This question is a bit terrifying, isn't it? Because like, God knows, I don't know where I see myself in five years. Five years is so far away, really. But what you, well, sometimes they ask you about three years. Sometimes they just say future. Where do you see yourself in the future? I'm saying it quite naturally, but if, if the person interviewing you is very fluent, they'll probably say it super fast, like, where do you see yourself in five years? You know, something very quick. Um, most of the time, most of the time, it's someone with a good level of English, but not a native speaker. So relax if you're in Brazil, okay? Where do you see yourself in five years? That's the best thing I have for tonight because I have a very advanced, like super, super fluent, to be honest, answer to teach you. So you can say it and everyone's going to be like, my God, your English is amazing. And you're like, no, nah, I'm learning. They're like, no, really, it's so good. You're like, my God, thank you. So it's, you know, do this, okay? Um, where do you see yourself in five years? Your answer. I'd like to think I'll be climbing the career ladder and also that my English will be fluent. Oh, I need some water after this. Hold on. I'm still recovering. I'm still on antibiotics, people. But really, when you, <laughs> when you say, I'd like to think I'd, so I would, okay, contract it, I'd. I'd like to think I'll be climbing the career ladder. A ladder is like, you know, the thing that you use to go up. That's a ladder. Sometimes it's stairs. If it's in a house, it's stairs. You go upstairs. If it's just one of those that you put outside to paint the wall, it's a ladder. 
Um, I'd like to think I will be climbing the career ladder. That's like native person answer. So this live was worth it, really. I'd like to think I'll be climbing the career ladder because maybe if you are super young and it's one of your first jobs, um, supposedly, supposedly you are a lawyer and you just graduated from law school and it's your first job. So, you know, hopefully in five years, you will be climbing the career. Thank you. I don't say that we're in my life because they're getting embarrassed. That you will be, thank you, that <laughs> you will be climbing. Uh, in English, we say with all due respect, with all due respect, of course, no, thank you, no problem, thanks. That you'll be climbing the career ladder because come on, you're just starting now. In five years' time, you want to be a step higher, you know? So I'd like to think is a very very advanced, like fluent structure. What does this mean? I'd like to think. What? It's, it's an expression and it means that you would like with all due respect, with all due respect, com todo respeito. Um, when you say um, that you would like to think something, it means that you hope you hope, but you don't know, you know, you don't have the answer. Because when you say, I will be climbing the, the career ladder, it sounds very arrogant. It's like, how do you know? You don't know. So when you say, I'd like to think I will be climbing the career ladder, it makes you sound more humble. Do you know this word? Humble. It's like the opposite of arrogant. Like, huh? I am the best, arrogant. Humble is the opposite. No, stay here, Anderson, it's okay. We're still going, it's okay you're late. Um, so, when you say, I'd like to think I will be climbing the career ladder, it shows that you are humble and that you are also ambitious. So humble and ambitious together, great combo for a job interview, friends. Um, and also, when you mention your English, when you're doing an interview in English and you mention, th no, think with me here, this is like strategy moment, okay? You are doing an interview in English and you mention your English, what, what is the message you're sending here? You're saying to the person interviewing you, look, I know that I am, you know, improving my English. I am aware that's what I'm doing, that's my plan. So, you know, English is part of my ambition. I understand how important English is in my career. So don't worry, I'm working on this, you see? So it's important to, to mention something. So I'm gonna ask the question again. Guys, there are lots of people joining, listen up. We are on question number three now. I am going to repeat the question and then I'm gonna get, give you the answer for you to see what I mean. It's very important, stay there. Where do you see yourself in five years? And you're like, oh, um, remember this sound when you're thinking in English? In Portuguese we go, uh, uh, in English, we don't do that. In English, we go, um, um, it's weird, isn't it? Like we have different thinking sounds, but we do. Um, so you do this. Where do you see yourself in five years? And you go, um, I'd like to think I'll be climbing the career ladder and that my English will be fluent. You nailed it. Do you know what this means? It's a great expression. You nailed it! Means you got it. Ahazo, basically, okay? You nailed it, really. Um, again, let's do it again. Repeat with me, okay? Let's do it together, guys. I can't see you, what a shame. I wish I could see you. 30 people, 29, oh my God. It's my record time, I mean number. Go back. Where do you see yourself in five years? Where do you see yourself in five years? 
I'd like to think I will be climbing the career ladder and that my English will be fluent. How good is this answer? This is probably the best answer you ever heard, isn't it, in English for a job interview, for people who are learning. I thought about this so much for you guys. Today I was like, I need to come up, please, I need to come up with a very good answer because this is the type of question that can make you or break you in a job interview. So I will do all I can to help you, you know, nail this. That's a very good answer, all right? I'd like to think I will be climbing the career ladder and my English will be fluent. That's it, that's all you need. Now, I got all the three questions down and I think they were very important questions and I think we've got some good answers. <laughs> Hello. So I think it's gonna be great for you guys. Now I wanna know if you guys have any specific questions for me. Can I help you tonight with anything? Let me drink my water before my voice goes funny again. Hit me, hit me with questions. Let me see if I can help you. Is there everyday live? If I do a live every day, no, no, I don't do a live every day. I do a live once a week, uh, most weeks. Last week, there was no live because I was very ill and I had no voice. But um, we're back every week. Um, any questions? Can I help you tonight? Cheers. No one wants to know. I am so sad. Last week, guys, there was no singing involved because literally there was no voice. And no singing means sad times. Um, okay. Very good. Thank you. Thank you. Every Wednesday? No, not every Wednesday. It depends. Uh, I'm supposed to be working right now. Like, I'm supposed to be, I am working, but I'm supposed to be teaching. I'm supposed to be doing a lesson right now. But my student is traveling. So I decided to do this live. It depends, really. I do it every week, but the time and the day changes normally. But that's okay. So I guess we have no more questions. We got it all covered. I hope that next time you have a job interview, you remember what we talked about today. Uh, remember, listen more than you talk because you will be nervous and when you're nervous, you might talk too much and make mistakes that you don't need to make. So avoid that. Uh, also, I think it's amazing your life's teaching us. Congratulations, thank you. Oh, thank you guys. Can you please explain if there's some difference between I think and I reckon, basically the same. Thank you. Basically the same, really. I think and I reckon are pretty much the same when you talk about your opinion. I reckon I should uh, go to bed early. I reckon. You know? It's, it's what I think in terms of, this is my opinion. This is what is going through my head. But when you talk about the verb to think literally, then it's just think. For example, I'm going to ask you a question. Think! I can't say reckon, well, that doesn't make sense. Got it? Do you think music can help to improve your fluency in English? It's difficult because I'm shy. I'm shy too, I understand. I'm not shy right now because it's just basically me looking at myself. But I am shy, I understand you. Um, no, I don't think music helps people to become fluent in English. That's my personal opinion, okay? Um, if you have a really cool strategy, maybe. But generally speaking, I don't think that's the best way to go about it. What you can do instead, if you're shy and you don't want to be talking to people, is watch things you like with subtitles in English. Forget this whole thing about audio in Portuguese and subtitles in English, because this doesn't work for 99.9% .9 of people, so don't do that. English audio, see my voice is being funny again, oh my god, no. 
English audio, English subtitles, something you really like, something you are really, really, really interested in, okay? So it doesn't feel like you are studying. That's important. When it feels like you're studying, you don't want to do it every day because nobody really wants to study every day. So, something you like, English audio, English subtitles, pause, repeat out loud. It's so important to listen to yourself speaking English. You have got, you have got to get used to yourself because it's a different language. Truth be told, you sound very different in Portuguese and in English. I sound very different too. So, get used to yourself. What's the difference between another and other? Whoa, I love this question. I remember when I asked somebody this question. It was when I had moved to England. I think I had been there three, three months maybe, something like that. It was in the beginning. And I asked my friend at school, Michelle, I asked her, you know, why another and why other? Yeah, between. And she looked at me and she said, uh, mm, another is like next. That was the explanation she gave me, which meant I didn't understand. Who understands that? That's a rubbish explanation. Come on. So, do you agree with me, guys? B difference, listen up. Difference between another and other, okay? Do you agree with me that an means one? So an apple, for example, one apple, right? An means one. So when you say another, you have an plus other, which means one other. In a sentence, real life sentence for you to see what I mean here, okay? Um, are you... Um, are you talking to are you talking to Camilla? No, I'm not talking to Camilla. Uh, I'm talking to another friend. Another. One other. It's not Camilla, it's one other. So it's another friend. You see? Another is one other. So it's always this idea of one other. And other is just general other. I have other friends. A lot of the time you use other with plural things. So I have other friends. Uh, I have other things to do. Got it? Because it's plural. Another is just one. One other. Uh, one more question before I go. Have you guys got another question that you would like me to answer tonight? Before I go. Uh, do I speak another language? No. Well, I, I speak Portuguese. That's my first language. I'm Brazilian. And English is my second language. I don't speak another language. All right, lovely people. It has been a pleasure as always. Thank you for joining me tonight. And I hope that you guys are ready for your next job interview in English. Please, when this happens, send me a message telling me about it. I want to know, okay? It has been great. Thank you, everyone. See you next week. Bye. <laughs>